Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos from GLAAD. Okay, Neil, I'm obsessed with the show. I've seen it all, um, but let's talk about this. Gay breakup, I mean, we, we haven't seen a lot of this when it comes to this genre on television. Why was this, because you're also a producer on it, um, why was this a story you wanted to tell? Well, I think the gay relationship has had its own evolution before, I, I don't even know before. It, it, it didn't feel like the gay breakup story was as universal, as accepted, as uh, mainstream uh, as it has been now. And so you have Darren Starr, Jeffrey Richmond, uh, Don Roos, Anthony Higginbotham, like great writers of a certain age who have had these breakups, have lived these lives. And so they're telling their story at a time when it doesn't feel like it's a quiet story that can only be told to certain mm -hmm. people. It's a breakup story that, are, that happens to everyone. And someone wonderfully earlier today mentioned, acknowledged that you don't see shows where uh, guys are showing emotion a lot. And so I thought, oh, that's very interesting because it does show it from a male perspective. Male on male for sure, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's like, it's from the perspective of the man's emotions of a breakup, which is also fairly universal. So that's what drew me, drew me to it. Absolutely. Brooks, uh, you have had such a successful long career thinking about all your stuff on Broadway through the years. How cool is it for you at this point in your career to now be in a series with Neil Patrick Harris, but also, like you said, Darren Starr. It's, it's such a fun series. Yeah, yes, I think so too. It's, a, it's wonderful to answer your question. It's actually really, really cool to be at this, you know, uh, I'm not uh, young at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> and, you know, so it's, I feel really lucky to tell you the truth. This was uh, something that sort of came my direction and I couldn't be more happy about it. It was thrilling to work with these people and work with, of course, Neil, who's you know, name, Neil Patrick Harris, Mr. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Mr. Neil Patrick Harris. Thank you, that's in the writer. And yeah, yes, and you know what? Back. No no spoilers, but Stanley does get to have a scene with someone that Neil Patrick Harris knows very well, so that was a fun moment. Yes, yes, almost revenge-like. I mean, right. Tuck, we, we've talked a lot, and I, you know, I'm thinking about all the recent projects you've done. How good does it feel just to be continuing to play these interesting LGBTQ characters, like I said, telling important stories that we don't hear enough. How good does that feel for you? Well, it's a really good point because I, I'm a gay actor who's been playing gay roles since the 90s. And when I played gay roles in the 90s, people said, you can't be a gay guy playing gay roles. You won't get to play the other roles. And at the same time, they said, you're a gay guy. You, get, you don't get to play straight roles. So mm -hmm. I kind of, in, in a sense, was uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. but. You know, as things have progressed and has as change has occurred and that we are seeing that change now, we don't have gay characters who are just the gay clown or just the terribly troubled gay guy or the psychopath. Mm -hmm. We have real fleshed out characters. Now you've got uncoupled. And we've mm -hmm. come all the way to the point where it's, you know, a cast of, of characters that, you know, really fill out the LGBTQ spectrum and each character is a different stripe. So you don't just got one guy in there. You've got, you know, several members of our community. So it's it's a real big deal. Neil Patrick Harris. Um, I was speaking with Tuck. That's only he, for the cast. That's, that's really only for the cast. I got it. Um, Call me Neil. He said that it was, it meant a lot to him to get to be an out gay actor and also play these interesting roles. For you, how cool was it to be, you know, to, to do that as well and just, you know, tell these intricate, entertaining, but also heartfelt stories? It only, yeah. it only like, I only, it only, I only picked up on it halfway through the filming of the series where I thought, wow, this is super gay. <laughs> but while we were filming it, I didn't really think we're doing this thing. And this means this, it means something. And, and in point of fact, I feel like it may mean more because it's it's just people living their lives as anyone would. Okay, this series, a gay breakup story. We don't often see this. Why was this something that you wanted to be a part of? Well, I've been wanting to work with Darren Starr ever since he did not hire me for the pilot of Melrose Place. So I plotted and schemed and made quick work of forcing him to hire me almost half a century later. But, you know, we have celebrated gay marriage in the past, but what comes with gay marriage? Gay breakups, gay divorce. So it's just part of the natural trend as we, you know, 
work our way through life. So art is, is imitating life because that stuff's happening out there in the real world. I love that. Uh, and it is quite hilarious. I've seen every episode already. Wait, but wait, you were on Melrose Place for like one episode, right? I was on Melrose Place That's for one episode. That's a good one. That's a good one. I'm like, I, I, I think you were, uh-huh. <laughs> I told Courtney Thorne Smith that her eyes sparkled when she laughed. Well, I, I, I agree, I, I, they definitely sparkled. Tuck said, uh, Darren, that he hunted you down after you didn't um, cast him full-time on Melrose Place, even though I, rem I reminded him you were in one episode. I do remember that. Uh, what's your reaction to that? No, I knew Tuck, Tuck was. He didn't hunt me down, but no, it's true. What I what I never remembered was that we didn't. That I guess he read for Matt on Melrose Place. Tuck so much. Oh he was one of the first, really one of the first out gay characters on television. And when I think about what the the constraints we had in writing that character, you know, flash forward thirty years to what we're doing now with this show, it's just like, um, it's it's a it's amazing. Yeah, you know, and, absolutely. Um, so that's part of why I'm very, they we're both very proud of the show and just sort of how, you know, the stories, the stories we can tell today in such a huge mainstream way on Netflix that's going to be seen all over the world. And, um, you know, I remember on Melrose Place having to kind of, you know, film and cut the gay kiss. Let me jump over to Emerson too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, you know, speaking about him, Darren, with Sex in the City, is it safe to say that your character is the Samantha of the group? I mean, I'm not going to stop you from saying that because <laughs> I, I consider that a very, very high compliment for someone who's seen every single episode of Sex in the City at least twice. Yeah. Um, no joke. I was I was watching one night before last because I spent all day um, watching the series again. Um, I think that's a lovely comparison, just from a, you know, a slightly, you know, different different vibe than Samantha was, but we're, but I think we'd both date the same guys. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, that, that works. The two of you have created some of the best, most inclusive LGBTQ content, but this time, okay, we're talking about a gay breakup. So what was the inspiration and, and why did you want to tell this story? You know, I feel like at a certain age, you've, you've either been left or you've left somebody, and it's a very universal experience. And um, I, I, we, I wanted to tell a story from a gay man's perspective that would feel like a universal story to everybody. And I think the story of the the, um, the idea of a breakup is something that, and heartbreak, I think is somebody is something that everyone has experienced. But also, I think it was important for me and for Jeffrey to to sort of um, explore the depth, the emotional depth that that any that to see that a gay character a gay man is having that level of emotional reaction vulnerability and i think when you um and neil's so wonderful at portraying that and i think everybody can relate to those emotions yeah and jeffrey that was something actually that neil said that he we don't often see men in general talk about emotion when it comes to breakup and all of that. So what was it like to kind of make something that is absolutely hilarious, but also has hard and has, you know, those important conversations happening too? I think um, our task as writers was just to tell the truth, that we weren't constricted by the boundaries of sitcoms or dramas or melodramas, or we just, we knew we were funny. We knew what the situation was, so, we knew we had the most authentic leading actor that we could have gotten for that part. So we just wrote the truth. And sometimes it was funny and sometimes it was heartbreaking. And Neil and the rest of the dream cast just came through so brilliantly. So it was pretty, pretty yeah, we did And we weren't prioritizing the comedy or the jokes. I mean, we really wanted to feel the, the emotional honesty and, and it's the sadness sometimes. Of, of what this character is going through, and not, and really not shy away from that, or, or, or feel nervous that people aren't going to be laughing because right. there are parts of the show where you won't be laughing. You'll be, hopefully, you'll be crying, you know. And I think that's a, that's okay because I think that's part of his journey, and I also think that's what makes makes it relatable. Emerson, for you, as funny as the show is, there is a lot of heart to it, and I think there is a message to it. What do you hope that people take away from the series? Uh, hope. You know, a, a hope, be it if you're going through something, not, not even necessarily a breakup, just 
to find the humor in it. Hopefully you have people by your side that can be as supportive as, as Billy tries to be and Stanley tries to be for Michael, but but hope and whatever you're going through, maybe there's an opportunity to laugh at it a little. And I think that's what we do in this, this show. We're, I mean, listen, it's a funny show, but there's a lot of heart and drama in it as well. And I think that's one of the things that makes it special. Thank you so much. And just a reminder, everyone, you can check it out July 29th on Netflix.